Hey, good morning, folks. Welcome back to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources, the channel where we rebuild, repair, recycle instead of nipping down to Harbour Freight and buying a new one. This channel is now about seven years old. Most of the stuff that I've been bringing you over the last seven years has been about managing in times of adversity, sticky situations, how to get things done when you can't find the things that you need. Now one of the main pushes has been energy sustainability, energy autonomy, looking after yourself when SHTF. You've seen me build wood stoves, you've seen me build rocket stoves, you've seen me experiment with uh, creating my own diesel from waste products, you've seen the GEET generator, you've seen me produce a little bit of hydrogen. Yep, I've dabbled in all sorts of things. But you know what? Now that we're here, right at the time where society is collapsing. I know, I know, there's those of you out there who, as long as you can still get a big breakfast before 10am at McDonald's, and your air fryer still works when you plug it in, you'll be quite happy and unconcerned, and you won't think that there's anything awry. But most of the people who watch this channel are interested in being one step ahead of the herd. So I've come right back to basics. As I say, I've looked at all these different forms of energy creation. Well, actually, it's not creation. It's energy transformation. We're turning one form of energy into a more usable form of energy. But as exciting and as interesting as all these different projects that we've done over the years have been, I keep coming back to the basics. And one of the basics is gasification. It's, it's fusion. It's just like Back to the Future when Doc and Marty McFly discussed where they were going to get the 1.79 gigawatts of energy required to get the DeLorean to jump into a different time frame. Way back in the 1870s, right here in the town where I live, people were using the fusion principle, the, the gasification, to create a usable fuel from something that was all around them. That that was all around them was trees, wood. Wood gasification in the 1870s was very big around here. The gold mining rush that they were in the middle of was first of all powered by water wheels. Then Pelton wheels, which is a high speed water wheel. Then they moved on to steam. But as soon as the gas gasification technology became available, they moved away from steam into much safer gasification. It's a fairly simple process. All you need is a highly insulated reaction space and a continuous feed of fuel. And then you need a way to capture the resulting gases and direct them to where they're going to be used. Now, over the last two weeks, I've been in the shed faffing about with this. And what I've done is basically put the three units together as tightly as I possibly can so that it remains mobile and um, compact because as you can see I'm a bit pushed for space around here. Now this home energy reactor that I've created will power any internal combustion engine up to around 30 horsepower. That means that once this thing is perfected it's going to be able to run my generator, which will run the whole place electricity wise, I can run my log splitter, I can run my wood chipper, I can run my water blaster, and even my lawn mower. In fact, any four stroke internal combustion engine can be run on wood gas. Even diesel, with a few more modifications. Two-stroke engines, they require a separate lubrication system that um, has to be intermittently applied to keep them running. Now this is doable. You can do this. If you get busy now, while we've still got YouTube, 
you'll be able to go and discover other people who are doing what I'm doing in different ways because it can be done in many ways. Look, it's not difficult. Yes, around the back there's a little bit of plumbing. There's various bits of pipe work and flanges and there is a 12 volt fan that uh, you do need to get the thing started. Once it's up and running, the internal combustion engine's own vacuum will pull the gases through and that fan is no longer required. But for a two to three minute period, you've got to find a way of pulling the gases through. If you're in the position to be able to build one of these things, I'm sure you'll be able to come up with a fan that will do the job. Now, if you want to be a mover and a shaker and stay ahead of the game, I'm urging you to have a look at my other videos. Subscribe to the channel, otherwise you're not going to get the notifications that let you know when I post updates on this. Because over the next few weeks, I'm going to be working on this and working hard to bring you what works. I'd like everybody to be able to do what I'm doing here. This whole channel's about looking after the people who are important in your life. Basically making sure that your loved ones are fed, warm and safe. I'd like to think that Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources is a bit of a portal to a, a safe zone, to a place where you can learn and be supported and creative and have access to the resources that you'll need to create a new world out of what we get left with. The collar and tie people who are running the place at the moment don't have a clue how to do things without money. And over the next few weeks or months, we're all going to be in that situation. And over the next few months, that's the situation we're going to be in. There's going to be a lot of lost people out there. People like you and I with a few clues are going to be able to gather folk together and start moving people down a productive track where we can rebuild from what we have left lying around us. So let's work together. Let's create a little bit of freedom between us so that we can break free from the chains of society and create a world that we can still enjoy even in times of hardship. Wood gasification is tried and true. It's been around since the 1860s. In fact, in the 1860s, right here, where I live, we had a bit of a gold rush. And as the gold rush expanded and processing plants started popping up, these processing plants were first run by water wheels. Then they were run by steam engines. The next phase of power before electricity was producer gas, which is wood gas. It's known by a handful of names, syngas, which of course is synthesized gas, gas that's made, producer gas because these things produce it, or it's also known by what the fuel is, wood gas or coal gas. Later on in your grandparents or great-grandparents time, which is the 1950s and 1960s, it became known as natural gas. They were making it from coal. In fact, all across Europe, especially in England, every town had its gas plant, the gas works. It was marketed as clean burning natural gas. And yeah, it is a natural gas, but it doesn't just fall out of the ground. These people were producing it. It was synthetic, it was produced, hence all these different names. What they were doing is cooking coal. As they cook coal, the volatile hydrocarbons fractionate off and are collected, cleaned, stored, and then pushed down pipes to grandma's house, where grandma can cook dinner on it and heat the house. Now, as exciting and as interesting as these other forms of energy that I've been working on seem to be, you can't beat the proven reliability of something that's been done over a 200 year period commercially and worked. In fact, in Korea today, because of their economy, the peasants, the average people, they're forced to use 
gasify gas to run their vehicles and heat their homes. Kim Jong-ul is keeping North Korea a pretty secretive place. He plays his cards very close to his chest. They were actually doing rather well when they were supported by the former Soviet Union. But when the Soviet Union collapsed, so did their funding. North Korea has been living the lifestyle that you will be living within about two to three years. I'm sorry to say that, but it's, um, but the truth is out there. We need to be looking at these alternatives. We need to school ourselves up so that we're able to manage when the collar and tie people and the big, big house in the capital can't make things happen anymore. Because all they do from up there is issue directives and pull strings. There's no real work done in those circles. We're the people who do the work. We're the people who cut the firewood. We're the people who fetch the water. We're the people who cook the meals. Grassroots. It's up to us to keep society together. Now, as I said right at the beginning, we're in such a gradual state of change and we're constantly being placated by the media and the politicians that the average person doesn't have a clue what's going on. It's up to you and me to make this happen. And I believe that this is tried, true, simple and possible with a little bit of training. I urge you to watch the other videos that I've done on this process. Go and join a forum, an internet forum that I've joined, which is called Drive On Wood. This is a wood gas forum out of the United States. But you know what? It's incredible how many Scandinavian people are on this group. It's incredible how countries like Norway, Sweden, Poland have all long since, just quietly, been playing with wood gas. My introduction to wood gas was in 1985. In 1985, I was in the middle of my apprenticeship as an engineer, and week by week I was given amazing, interesting jobs. And one of the interesting jobs that I worked on in 1985 was a wood gasser for the Fiji Islands. You see, in the Fiji Islands, they've got um, a waste problem and an energy problem and a food production problem. So some bright spark over there had cottoned onto the idea of a wood gas generator powered by the hairy, shaggy, fibrous waste that comes around the outside of coconuts, crushed down into granular form and then pyrolyzed in a gasifier, would create a gas which could then run a turbine, and that turbine powers a local power station. So their food production is now also sorting out their waste problem and their power problem. And that was way back in 1985. This is being done all over the world, just quietly, on an industrial scale. And down at the bottom here, the plebs like us don't get to see these things. So what the purpose of these videos is, is to help you understand the basic concepts behind gasification show you how you can build a device on various scales to produce enough gas to provide your energy needs. So buckle up, grab a coffee, sit down, subscribe to the channel, because if you don't subscribe to the channel, you won't get the notifications and you won't see the upcoming videos. But in these upcoming videos, plus the ones that I've already posted, you'll be seeing how gasification works, how you can build a gasifier, what type of gasifier you need to be working on to get the results that you need. And later, when I've learned enough about how to do it, I'm gonna be running my old Land Rover on wood gas. But how the process works is basically, you've gotta get the wood incredibly hot, and then you've gotta get the gases that come off that wood 
back down to a normal temperature again. The operating zones of the system are clearly defined. This is just a feed hopper. This is the actual reactor. The rest of it is to do with cleaning and cooling the gases. The whole thing has to remain pretty much airtight so that you can control the small amount of air that is let in with this device here. At each of the low points it's important to have a method for removing any condensation. So underneath the bottom here we've got a port that allows me to take out any condensation that accumulates in the bottom of re the reactor. There's a jar on the bottom of the cyclone that allows me to remove any contaminants that fall out of the cyclone. Because that's what the cyclone is designed for. It's designed to remove contaminants. But a secondary feature of the cyclone is that it also does quite a bit of initial cooling. After the cyclone, the gases then move into the condenser. You can see over the back here that the condenser is made out of a, an oil fin domestic radiator. It's working backwards. It's taking heat out of a warm gas rather than putting heat into a cold room. After the thinned radiator, then the gas gets split two ways. It can either go directly up to the flare pipe or it can be moved by turning two taps through the secondary filter system, which is on the bucket at the back here. And that bucket is designed so that it's comfortable is designed so that it can be used with various different filter mediums so that I can experiment. This whole thing is for experimentation. I'm not planning on running anything off it initially. This is just so that I can learn about wood gas.